Hey, everybody. Thanks for the nice intro, Spencer. It's not true. That's not the way my voice sounds. That was a little, little prank I just played on you. <laughs> and, uh, just a quick point of order. That wasn't actually my grandmother's house that we met at, Katie. That was just a grandmother's house. <laughs> <laughs> I know that old lady. She seemed nice, though. <laughs> Glad to be paired up with an artist that's, uh, we're about the same size, which is awesome. We're going to exchange jackets after the show. Third grade style, and we grew up bonded forever. We're just going to be jacket buddies for life. It's going to be great. Hey, guys, uh, guess who got married when he was 19? This guy. <laughs> was, uh, was the basically the first girlfriend I ever had. She was uh, a beautiful Colombian girl I met at a party at my friend Dennis the Russian's house. And, uh, just rampant black hair, <laughs> smile that lit up the room. Wow, oh, that looks exactly like both of us. <laughs> so beautiful the way we used to look at each other. <laughs> She was, uh, she, she was like the first girl I ever met who would like laugh at my jokes and accept my flaws and wasn't weirded out by my like very sparse body hair. It just seemed to concentrate itself around my nipples and belly button for some reason. Like a weird medieval army laying siege to a series of villages. I was 19 and she was 18 and we were in love. In the <laughs> stupid head first way that 18 and 19 year olds are in love sometimes, you know? And uh, came to find out that she was, I knew she was Colombian, did not know that she was, uh, she was born in Colombia, was the only one of her family that was uh, not a naturalized citizen at that point. Phone rang one day, it's my, my beautiful, tearful girlfriend on the other end. She says, uh, she said, what's wrong? She says, well, uh, you're going to have to move back to Colombia. I said, why do you have to do that? She explained to me that she was, uh, she was one of those uh, illegal aliens you're always hearing about on the news, you know? It's weird because I never even saw her like, wear a sombrero or <laughs> steal anyone's job. As far as I knew, she said like her own job that she got herself. I don't know Stole it from any hard-working Midwesterner, you know? <laughs> so she shares this news with me. Like I said, I was, uh, you know, deeply in love at the time, in a stupid 19-year-old way. She tells her she's going to have to move, and I say, Oh, no, you're not. Such a powerful boner in my heart. <laughs> Telling me, oh, no, the government's not going to take my love away from me. I don't think so. That is what love looks like, you guys. <laughs> Beautiful circle, a little empty, parts of it, but, you know, lovely for the most part. <laughs> so I said, absolutely not. I'm not going to allow this. I'm a fucking stubborn, pig-headed, stupid man. <laughs> not going to allow this to be taken away from me. So what can we do? What can we do, baby? What can we do? He said, well, if I, uh, if I married a citizen, I guess I could stay in the country. But it would be a felony for us to do so, to, to marry fraudulently. I said, guess what, sweetheart? I love you. I love crimes. And I hate authority. So let's do this. So we got married. I called, called my father, who still lives uh, back in the Midwest, to share the good news. The first thing he asked me is, uh, she's from Columbia, huh? Is she, uh, she colored? He said, well, Dad, please don't ever use that word in reference to a human being ever again. <laughs> we don't do that anymore. And uh, I don't think so. I mean, she gets real tan in the summer, but the rest of the time she's just regular people colored. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what you're getting at. He was very supportive of the whole idea. I think he was just doing it to spite my mom. Because much like Shanti's parents, they split up when I was three, and it was a, it was an acrimonious split. There were always people that I never really understood, like how they got together in the first place, you know? Because like 
My mom was a very like very successful, very driven woman. Ended up going to Stanford Law School. My dad uh, got fired from his job at the J.B. Hunt Trucking Corporation for getting drunk and flipping a semi. <laughs> I really had any idea how those two ended up together until <laughs> so I saw a picture of them when they were both 19 and uh, my mom was very pretty and my dad had a sweet ass Trans Am. <laughs> suddenly it all made sense. <laughs> so immediately stricken with the thought that I was probably conceived somewhere in or around that sweet ass Trans Am. <laughs> kind of gross. <laughs> I always feel like I have like part of both parents. Like I have like, like I grew up the first half of my life in like the Midwest in Central Kansas, where my dad still lives. <laughs> when I about twelve years old. That's what it looks like—a rectangle with just a bite taken out of one side. <laughs> most boring state besides Colorado, which is just a square. Come on, guys. Come on, Fred, Colorado. I'm assuming that's the guy who invented in Colorado. <laughs> Not a very creative man. So I spent the first half of my life in this place, right around the center there. <laughs> then when I was 12, my mom got into Stanford. We moved out to uh, we moved out to beautiful Bay Area here. So I was raised, you know, first half of my life just a bunch of amongst a bunch of redneck racist homophobes. Second half of my life amongst uh, you know people who value education and love to read and have progressive political agendas. Somehow I internalized both value systems too. Like there's a weird redneck part of me that's just in my bones that I've come to accept that I just can't shake like no matter how many books I read I still love Bob Seger <laughs> just get real excited if I even see a picture of a crossbow <laughs> look at that crossbow it's camouflage holy shit better not drop that sucker in the woods you'll never find it <laughs> Even though it's like fully possible to support women's reproductive rights and marriage equality and also just fucking love monster trucks. <laughs> Every time I watch the monster truck race, I get so excited. <laughs> There's huge trucks driving over those regular sized cars. This is incredible. This is great. Digger versus El Toro. This is the matchup of the decade. You know what? The driver of Grave Digger and the driver of El Toro wanted to uh, have a beautiful, loving relationship after the race. I think that'd be fantastic as well. Maybe they could carpool. <laughs> Ride in the same monster truck over those regular sized cars, reducing the carbon footprint of the monster jam. <laughs> Be very beautiful. So decided it was time for uh, for the girlfriend, now wife, to come back and meet the family in the Midwest. The <laughs> Mildly racist hits just kept on coming. I told my grandma I was bringing the girl back to meet her. She was so excited. Wanted to make a big family dinner for everybody. Asked if there was anything that uh, anything that my special lady didn't like to eat. And I said she doesn't like pork. Which is because when she was in middle school, she had to dissect a fig pe uh, pig fetus. Not a fig fetus. <laughs> she may have dissected one of those. I'm not sure. <laughs> I didn't get into the whole high school biology curriculum. <clears throat> she was very traumatized by dissecting his pig fetus, decided she never wanted to eat pork. Told my grandma that, and my grandma immediately asked, well, is she Jewish? I was like, no, grandma, she's not Jewish. And my grandma goes, well, you know, your Uncle Lou is Jewish, and we sure are fond to him. <laughs> well, thanks, grandma. <laughs> not sure you needed to add that second part, because he's your beautiful daughter's husband who's always taken very good care of you. Could have just left it at that. Which immediately made me think that my grandma was probably not the most uh, progressive person, potentially. You know, there's a woman who was born in like 1925 in central Kansas. Like, I'm sure that in her youth, she let multiple N-words fly on various occasions. She's a product of her environment, you know. 
can't imagine her seeing civil rights marches on the black and white television and just being like, oh, well, that's great. Not worried about that at all. <coughs> Still a beautiful lady, though. You know, people got flaws. I know I got a lot. <laughs> Part of the reason our relationship worked so well is because, uh, like I said, she was very accepting of all my weird flaws. and uh, Things went really well for, uh, for a long time. A number of years. We were together for six years, probably. Four of them were pretty good. The last two, I don't know how she put up with me. A lot of nonsense. Perfect examples, we went to a, a wedding of one of her friends. I didn't like her friend, and I didn't like the guy she was marrying either. And there was an open bar at the wedding. So I decided, yeah, I'll show up, I'll eat, I'll drink. Get about, about 10, 12 shots of uh, well bourbon in. <laughs> and uh, just marched over to the stage where the band was playing and started demanding that they do Billy Ocean. <laughs> Get out of my dreams, get in my car, wedding band. We weren't friends with that couple anymore after that. And uh, things started to go south a little bit at a certain point, as they do, because we grew up and we were two different people, we started to grow apart, and I did uh, what would become my classic breakup move. It's commonly referred to as the fade away. It's become increasingly <laughs> become increasingly distant over a period of months until the other person notices there's something wrong and then brings it up says maybe we should uh, do something else besides what we're doing now and then you just get to be very supportive of the idea you don't have to feel like you've hurt anybody's feelings <laughs> say hey great see you later best of luck with everything and even though we're uh, you know we're two very different people now we uh, still see each other on occasion I'm still real close with her family she still likes mine and um, still have a certain fondness for each other, even though we're both now different people than we, uh, than we were when we had the thing that we had. We were like two people just sharing a plate of real greasy nachos, you know? Like, we know it's not good for either one of us, and it's a temporary arrangement, but it sure is fun for a little while. <laughs> and it really illustrated the fact that everything in life sort of has a beginning, a middle, and an end. <laughs> it's like this story. The butt. Thanks <laughs> for listening, everybody. <laughs>